We're glad to know you're still there. This is uh, Plus Politics. And uh, on this segment, former President Olusha Gumabasanjo has said that the 2023 election must be a turning point for the country, saying he is in support of a Saudana becoming the next president. Obasanjo said this on Saturday when the leadership of the Apex Social Cultural Group in Tiv, Benwe State, Nzo, paid him a visit at his Olusha Gumabasanjo Presidential Library penthouse residence in Abiyokuta Ogun State Capital. The former president, who was conferred with the title of a great warrior of Tivland by the socio-political group, said if Nigeria is ready to get it right in 2023, election should be a turning point. Basinjo's special assistant on media, Kende Akinyemi, in a statement said the former president enjoined Nigerians to take farming seriously. That's another point. Basinjo, who was responding to the president general, Chief Eobi Ea, said Nigeria must be restored to what God has created it to be. There was also the issue of Fulani Header's attack on Tivland and position on the Nigerian power sharing formula and so much more. Joining us to discuss this is Mr. Charles Otu, a political analyst. Glad to have you on the program, Mr. Otu. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, uh, former President Olusha Gwomobasanjo has admonished Nigerians. What's your take on this admonition? Let's start from there. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's well thought out because, um, like uh, the former president pointed out, uh, Obasanjo has shown he's a statesman in the real sense of the word, statesman. Um, for all his past, he could be forgiven as the only former president who is vocal about Nigeria getting it right in the 2023 elections. And uh, for uh, all it may, uh, for all intent and purpose, this comment by the former president should be taken very seriously, especially by the youth. The 2023 election before Nigerians is not the normal election. It could have been the normal election if the electoral reforms that has been enabled by the diverse and the, 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 all the uh, credits and the possibilities that have come with it hadn't come. So as a statesman, that admonition by President Tulsikano Passenjo is well thought out. And it is in the best interest of this nation, particularly the youth, to take it very seriously because it is their own issue that is at stake. But uh, do you think Nigerians are ripe for this kind of choices that he's asking of us? Because over the years, People in Nigeria have been voting along ethnic lines, along party lines, along lines, whatever lines they are. But this time he's asking us to do it because, not because of our emotions, not because of sentiments, but because of patriotism, uh, if I may put it that way. Do you think we're ripe enough to do that? Have we been educated enough? Because I'm including all of us uh, that are Nigerians, are not the political class. So are you sure we are ripe enough, educated enough, informed enough to make those decisions based on uh, something else other than emotions? Thank you very much. I will um, take this question in two parts. And the first is to give a background. When the Labour Party movement started, if you watch, you see that the temple appears to have died down, which means ethnicity is now coming in, religion is now coming in, money politics is now coming in, and uh, generally, too, emotions are now overriding the decisions or the, 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 what, what we may we call the primordial influence or interest of individuals in government or as regarding the 2023 elections generally as it were. But one thing that is certain is that as a statesman, a passenger has made this comment, knowing that all that there is, like I pointed out, through the reform of the Electoral Act to guarantee us, to mature us for the season, is already in place. So I think we are right. Why did I say so? If you look, go through the pages of the Electoral Act, you, if you take time to go through it like some of us have done, you will find out that a lot of things that used to be the, 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 the bottlenecks surrounding our elections have been taken off almost completely overtly from the system. It's been eliminated. So all we need now is the rallying willpower of the people to insist that, look, this time we are not just going to vote. 
we are going to vote to redefine our situation. Uh, look at it this way. If you saw what I made, a, uh, I shared on social media, it was shared virally on social media, I saw it and I also shared it. If you know that a bag of rice, for instance, because it's the season for rice, and everybody is campering for it, even the ones with stones are being valued now, treasured over the place. Because of what? They, if you know that the price has soared from just about 16,000 Naira to a whooping 45,000 or 30,000 Naira and above, you agree with me that anybody buying rice in this season is not buying it, is not going to get the deduction because he's a member of any political party, is not going to get the deduction because he's a, a supporter of one religion or one religious group or another. He's going to get the same for the 6,000 Naira that a bag of rice, a full bag of rice goes for. So what has led to this? Anybody who bought fuel in 2014, that was 2014 December, eight years ago, exactly. We know that at 187, people were shouting, now you carry 400 Naira or 350 or 300 Naira in your pocket, you're even looking for the fuel to buy. We read reports of people hawking fuel as if they're hawking gala in Lagos. And these are all signs of the basest form of leadership that Nigeria has been reduced to. Nobody is in charge of anything. Nobody is in control of anything. The president remains the minister of petroleum that is unaccountable to the masses, but accountable to only himself. So if you put all these indices together, you have the ample opportunity to use the PVC and the electoral act to correct these anomalies. Why? What other thing does Nigeria require to show that the system, the reforms in the system have matured them enough and ripened them to navigate the process of the 2023 elections, looking not just at the presidential seat, but across the 36 states of the federation. You look at uh, uh, the, the governors that we've had in the last eight years, you see that it's a sharp decline to what was in the last eight years before they came on board in 2015. Why do I say so? Look at the trade blame, the blame, the, the blame trading going on between the president and the governors. The governors, uh, the president say, oh, you squandered the resources of the country. We gave you money to build uh, people. You went and started building flyovers, airports, and all of that. You caused poverty to increase. And the governors are putting the blame back to the president. In all of this, who are the people toyed with? The average me and you who goes to the market, the ordinary market to buy yam, to buy rice at 46,000 naira, to buy fuel at um, a whooping 300 naira per liter. That is if you're able to see them in any filling station. So the, 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 the president, uh, former president of Asindio is just telling Nigerians that they have the powers in their hands. My dear brother, you agree with me that the Arab Spring, for instance, started, and all other revolutions have started with people, giving people words of courage, words of courage. Wars, revolutions, reformations, including political revolutions, have only come to inspiring words from inspiring leaders. What these words from the former president should do to Nigerians is to inspire them to say, oh, we even have the backing of past leaders who have been in government and they have seen that things have worsened for, uh, from what it used to be in the past. Once we have this in the back of our, the back of our mind, there is no other, there is no other, we, we are not mango fruits that uh, have seasons to ripe. This, even if we are, we were, this should be Nigeria's season to ripe. Because anybody who is not angry with what is happening in the current system is an enemy of the future of this country. Well, but um, if you talk, well, how much confidence do you even have in the 2023 election? We, we've seen uh, hoodlums burning INEC offices, and most of the people that we think are going to be the difference in that 2023 uh, maybe have not collected their PVCs because the people whose PVCs are being burned right now or stolen or vandalized or whatever name you're, you're going to, what word you're going to use, are the people who are new registrants and all that. Do you think but, the, the former voting, voting population now has information enough to make the right choices? And do you think that the people who are Carrying the revolution, so to speak, the youths and all that, are themselves prepared to do whatever it takes to make sure that there's that change that we're expecting them to bring. Thank you very much. If you check the statistics of uh, the registrants, the new registrants in the electoral system, 
you would have realized that there was a surge about, of about 12 point something million dollars, if I'm, I don't know if I'm correct. That's for registration, yes. collection of PVCs yes. and other thing. Of, of course. Now, for that figure to be willing now to be part of the political process, it means they have identified, because in a, in, in a social problem and social change, you were taught that when you identify a problem, that is when a solution can become. Now, having identified that, oh, the reason why things are this difficult, the reason why unemployment, the reason why inflation is at a, a, a staggering 21 point something percent is simply because we refuse to take part in the electoral process. If you remove the youth population in that number of new, uh, that total number of registered voters, you would have had um, an almost a significant number. So it shows that the people are ready. It shows that the message is permeating. And it shows that the people are now willing to take, you know, to, you know, to take advantage of the reforms in the electoral system. What we require now, as it were, is not to be inspired by any other thing, but by speeches, encouraging words, words of encouragement, speeches from people in the mode of Ulusegun uh, Obasanjo and other leaders. It is now time for people, uh, particularly the youths whom you talked about, to begin to tell their people that, look, we have to bring the credentials of all these people vying for this office to the table and begin to dissect them, their past antecedents, their current standards on issues, their standing on a job and Are they giving us promises that we will come back to say, yes, this man had promised this before as a governor for eight years in his state, for instance, and he did them. Or are they just telling us the things that will suit our fancy? Or are they just telling us things that, at the end of the day, we will be saying, oh, I voted for him because he said, it is the turn of my tribe. It is the turn of my region to produce a president. These okay. are the issues that should what, uh, uh, trouble the mind of the youth. But as for readiness, I can tell you that the average Nigerian youth is disturbed about about the current happenings in, this, in the country. And I, I could presume that we are above 50% ready to take this country by, our, by ourselves. Well, I, I like your optimism. Uh, some people, it depends on which uh, part of the divide you are. Some people will think that uh, we are not ready. Uh, maybe the preparation is not good enough, even from the part of INEC, even in the face of uh, using new technology in, uh, like BVAS. We had option A4 uh, at some point, and we thought that was the best kind of election that we ever had in 1993, but we still were talking about vote buying after that. We were talk talking about some other things. And if you think it's foolproof that whatever INEC has done and whatever kind of education has gone to the villages is good enough for 2023, well, we pray it is so. But Abbasanjo also said something, another thing, and he was very, very, or he is always very passionate about farming. And he also advised that Nigeria should go into farming and take it seriously. He was talking to the thieves. He was talking to the uh, Benue people. And these people are known to be very, very great farmers. But my question is, agriculture used to be the mainstay in Nigeria. Some countries like Malaysia were coming to Nigeria to study how to uh, keep uh, oil palms. And today, Nigerians are going back, or Nigeria is going back to Malaysia to study, to understudy Malaysia. It's a shame. Where did we get it wrong? Uh, At what uh, point did we much. just have that turn around and become worse in things that we were doing great? Thank you very much, my dear brother. The issue rests squarely with leadership. If we can answer the leadership question correctly, then we can well say, yes, that we are on board in getting our agricultural sector back to what it used to be. Uh, if you cast your mind back, the, the, uh, what I said earlier is what should trouble the minds of every Nigerian. Every Nigerian should cast his mind back to even the governments that were in 1999 to 2007 and the level of attention they paid to issues that matter to the people, to agriculture as a sector, to education. I come from a poor, a, 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 a state that is averagely very poor, a boy state. And I know that I went through, for instance, through 
the secondary education on a free education. I also know that while we are in government college at Tikbo then, we used to have, it, it used to be mandatory for you to produce something, which at the end of the day, you may think is only ending with the teachers and the school management and authorities and all of that, but it's not true. If you have a 10,000, if you have a, even a 1,000 hectare of land now in a point, ready for yam um, 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 cassava cultivation, and cassava planting and harvesting, it is not going to be something that a, a particular family will feed on. But the governor saw that the youth will become wiser if they continue to do that part of empowering them in these basic sectors, education, agriculture, and all of that. They started recruiting them to defend them on the social media while they used the other hand to take away their commonwealth, to plunder their commonwealth. That is what, where we got it from, if you ask me. Now, farming began to become something that is derided. Even in secondary schools, again, it's like if they, you put your son in the best private school that is only teaching and learning, teaching and learning, and agriculture is taken away completely from the curriculum. I used to know when you can be bold to say, oh, this, farms, this farm settlement inside the secondary school belongs to me. You not show it, you plant seasonal crops and harvest it, hand it over to school management. It was part of the school curriculum. This is not obtainable in this era, just because the governors know that once the youth are busily uh, dutifully engaged, they will not be available for progress. They will not be available for all the manner of things that they may want to deploy them for their uh, to, to achieve their selfish ends. So the 36 state governors that has ruled this country at least in the last 16 years and in the, since the return of democracy, are responsible for the decline of interest and the failure of agriculture. Let me be frank with you, my dear brother. If you go to the record and check the funds that has come through Padama, for instance, to a state like Airboy, you will be, agree with me that Padama has received uh, World Bank and other uh, assisted agencies has given the government the enabling funds to be channeled into this agriculture. What do the government do with the funds? The government, not just a boy, all over the country, because there is no, we don't even have uh, a minister of agriculture who is up and doing it, giving the statistics in following up on issues and all of that. What the governors do is to divert these funds to their private cronies who are politicians. They say they are buying fertilizers, they give them money. Those funds, up to 80% or 90% of it, does not touch on anything that has to do with agriculture. So how will you explain that a World Bank, for instance, through an assisted project like Padama, has invested maybe close to five, 10 billion in the last eight years in a state like Ebony, and we don't have any 2,000 hectares of land prepared for rice farming anywhere in the state. I'm just talking about 2,000 hectares of land. The government is not interested in taking the people back to farm because any day a governor sincerely, genuinely says, oh, I can take the same farm seeds farm sibling that Malaysians came to Nigeria to pick and it made the economy what it is today. This is where I want you, talks now that are carrying arms for me. This is where I want you to resume. Not sure this, uh, not sure this palm tree, have the palm fronts, don't even make returns. Use it and take care of yourself. Agriculture will become a mistake again as it used to be in the past. Mm. Okay, so cast Jam Young is what you're advocating from secondary school, from uh, primary school even. Uh, begin exactly. to teach them and empower them. Well, uh, if you have a final word for Nigerians uh, regarding either the election or anything else that uh, might uh, be your concern, this is the time. Just a few words before we wrap it up. Thank you very much. I'm very glad that um, all the parties now have, all the presidential candidates have now unveiled their manifestos. Before now, we used to talk earlier about the new hope from uh, Tinubu, the APC presidential candidate. Used to hear about uh, articles unity uh, agenda. Now we are hearing about uh, the Labour Party candidates uh, manifesto, which was released a few hours ago, a few days ago. Now Nigerians have the duty to interrogate those promises, vis-à-vis -vis the antecedents, vis-à-vis -vis the people backing them, vis-à-vis -vis -vis the people. Nigerians should not take their words for what it is. This are all political promises that can be forgotten. If somebody said he's uniting Nigerians, for instance, what are his antecedents towards the other segments and sections of the country? 
towards injustices done to the other parts of the country, what have the candidates done regarding that? These are issues for interrogation. If somebody said, oh, that now he has empowered so many persons, and they, he believes that he will now ride on the back of those individuals to the most powerful seats on the, of, of the nation, we should be asking, if he gets to that seat, what will be the role, what roles will be played by these powerful individuals around him to, as against and vis-a-vis -vis the interest of the common man in the streets? We should be asking, if you say you're giving us hope, you're giving us inspiration through your manifesto, uh, maybe these are the things you intend to do. You intend to take Nigeria from production, from consumption to production. What are your antecedents that are in What have you done in the past? Have you produced something that is of worth before? Have, can people look at, can Nigerians look at your credentials and your records and say, yes, that we can see what you have produced? How much have you contributed to the local economy in your environment, in your states, the states you govern? What have been your contributions? How sustainable are the legacy projects you left behind as a former governor? These people have, these candidates have all tested governorship positions for at least eight years, except Atiku, who was taken and became vice president almost the time he was about to be sworn in as governor. But he has also tested power, and we have seen what he has done. You may say, yes, that he, has, he couldn't do much as a vice president, but he has, asked, he has had his antecedents in 2007. Since 2007, he has been saying, give me power, give me power. What has he done? Even as a statesman, the way Obasanjo is talking, is it the way he was talking eight years ago? The way Obasanjo is talking, is it the way he was talking even before the APC came on board? He went there and he left. If Tinubu says, give me power, what has Tinubu done in the last eight years? If Tinubu brought Buhari, for instance, as it is the case now, and things are the way they are, and they didn't speak up, can we trust the next four years to him and, and, and be sure that he will not repeat the Buhari disaster? that we've witnessed in the last eight years. If a P2B to said he has done this and that as a former governor, can we verify those records and bring it side by side with his future antecedents? Who are those pioneering him? That is why, on my final note, I will ask the youth to know that it is the official that is at stake. If you don't do something now, if you don't act now, it will be too late and quite regrettable if you come to the future, in future to blame your children for the country you're handing over to them. Okay. That is my final word. Okay, thank you very they have, much. They have, they have all it takes, all yeah. the powers are within them and their PVC, guided by the Electoral Act, to cause a change in the polity. And thank you. I think they can, they are worth it to do it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Charles Otu, uh, for uh, your insight into these uh, questions that were asked. Thank you for being a part of uh, Plus Politics today. Thank you so much, my dear brother. Well, this is how we draw the curtain on today's program, Plus Politics. And uh, I'd like to thank you for being a wonderful audience uh, watching us today. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Have a good evening.